Hello. Uh, this time last year, I was in the midst of the most exciting experience of my entire life. I was on my way to winning 20 games on Jeopardy, which put me in second place of any contestant ever to be on the show. So it was just incredibly exciting. I was in this whirlwind of, of activity. I was doing interviews. I went on NPR. I was in the newspaper. I got mentioned in Glamour and Us Weekly. I even got to go on Good Morning America, where Robin Roberts interviewed me. It was, it was really unreal and so cool. But even though it was overall a really incredible experience, there were a few not so great aspects to it. I found that a lot of the media attention was on something I hadn't thought was very important when I'd been on the show, that I had won more games than any other woman who had played before. And I found, and it bothered me for a few reasons. I found that it felt like I was being, wasn't being considered on an even playing field with other great players who happened to all be men, that I was being considered, I felt like I was being held to some other standard, that I was just you know, pretty good for a girl. Um, and so it, it was something that I thought a lot about and, and really kind of bugged me. Um, I became the winningest woman, as Jeopardy likes to say, with my eighth win. And that was, that was the epithet that really stuck. And I understand why. It was a good hook for stories. And it was factually accurate. Anyone who wins six or more games on Jeopardy is considered a, a super champ. And there have only ever been 31 people who have done that. And only, only five of them have been women. So, um, so you know, it, it was true that it was unusual. But it wasn't just unusual for a woman. It was just unusual. Uh, <clears throat> But I found that I had a lot of conversations start, start like this. So you've won more games than any other woman. Why is that? And by the time I was getting those questions, I had won you know, 10 games, which had put me in fourth place. I had won 12 games, which put me in third place. And then by, the, by my, my 20th and final win, I was in second place. So winning this woman felt like old news. Um, and, and, it, and I wondered why, you know, why I was being asked a, to, be, um, to, to speak for my entire gender, for half the population, thousands of people who had competed on the show, but also why, if I was being asked to speak for my whole gender, why I wasn't being asked why I had won more games than all these other people, um, than anyone except Ken Jennings, who, if you remember, uh, about 10 years ago, won 74 games. Uh, so, you know, I'm a distant second, but, <laughs> but it's still, still pretty good. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, it was funny to be asked to, to speak, for, speak for everyone else. And, and I had actually come on the heels of several other really strong women players. And there were a few trend stories about women doing really well on Jeopardy last year. And I was really excited that, you know, these other great women who had played were being recognized and getting, you know, getting their due as, as smart players and good competitors um, and happy to be among them. But at the same time, you know, I couldn't explain why women were doing well last year. I mean, all I can speak for, the only person I can speak for is myself. And the only explanation I can give for why I, I did so well on Jeopardy was that when I knew the right response, I was really good at buzzing in first. And <laughs> so there's no secret. I didn't crack some code. I didn't get some special information that the guys had always had. I mean, it's, it's pretty basic. It's exactly what, the, what everyone at the show tells you to do. Um, it wasn't, I wasn't doing anything special. It's, my results were special. Um, and so the other thing that people focused a lot on that I felt had a very gendered component was my appearance. You know, the show tells you that there's a dress code. You should wear basically business casual clothing. And so it's, it's pretty easy. You just wear your work clothes and, and, and kind of call it a day. At least that's what I thought. I wanted to be comfortable. Um, I didn't want to be distracted from doing, playing my best when I was on stage. But like any woman who receives any amount of public scrutiny, people really wanted to talk about my clothes. Um, you know, we've all seen it with politicians and, um, you know, and celebrities, of course. But, but you know, it's, it's something that I hadn't really expected because it wasn't, it wasn't an important part of the, the show to me. And, um, but I found that when I did a Q&A and Ask Me Anything session on reddit.com, over 20 people wanted to know where I bought my clothes, where I got my jewelry. And uh, someone even created a Twitter account dedicated to my sweaters. <laughs> it was supposed to be cute, but the, this person created a chart that showed how much money I won when I was wearing a given color. So 
you know, you can look and see if I won more when I was wearing blue or gray or green or black. And and it really it really bothered me. I, I thought it's it's kind of troubling that this person chose to explicitly link my appearance and my performance, especially since being on Jeopardy, you know, doing well on Jeopardy has nothing to do with how you look. And so I, I thought this I, I really I really was bothered that the focus was shifted to what was on my body instead of what was in my mind. Um, and it was, a really, it was a really sharp contrast to actually being on the show. Um, the contestant experience on Jeopardy is absolutely wonderful. I can go on for hours about how great everybody who works at the show is, how much fun I had, how cool and interesting the other contestants are. It was just an incredibly wonderful, positive, fun, fun, fun experience. So, <clears throat> so um, you know, this having this other stuff kind of cast to Paul was, was strange in contrast to, to the way it was in the show. And I never felt that anyone at the show treated, n treated the male and female contestants differently at all. Um, it, on, on any given taping day, the show shoots five shows. So they bring in about a dozen people to play. There's one returning champion, and, um, and, about, and then the rest of the group is comprised of 10 people who will be the two challengers for each, each of the five shows, and one or two extra bodies in case someone can't play or, um, or you know, just in case they need somebody else. So, um, and then that group of about a dozen people is almost always 50-50 men and women. So you're never in the minority as a woman. You're never in the minority as a man. It's, um, even though in a given game, the gender split is inherently unequal because, because there are only three contestants, in the group overall, you never feel you never feel out of place um, for that reason. And I know the show must do it by design, since they take a lot of trouble to balance professions, geographies, um, interests. I mean, they they they're very conscious of who they're bringing in on any given week, and that really I think makes the show feel feel like gender. When you're at the show, it feels like gender is a non-issue, and everybody is treated exactly the same way by everybody at the show. You, everybody goes through the same preparation process. You rehearse on stage together. Um, by the time you, you go out to play, you've, you've had the same, you know, the same prep as everybody else. Um, and then once the game starts, the way you look, the way you act, the look on your face, if you're standing up straight, if you're slouching, if you're fidgeting, if you're standing stock still, none of it matters. All that matters is how well you play the game. Um, so what happens is the categories and the clues are revealed to the contestants at the exact same time. Nobody sees what, what's going to be on the show until, um, until the same time you do when you see it at home. And so nobody has an edge. And then um, everybody's buzzer is activated by a switch once, once Alex Trebek finishes reading the clue. And then when you buzz in, it might look at home like Alex Trebek calls on somebody. And he does, but it's a computer that tells him who to call on. So it's very egalitarian. There's, there's no preference. I mean, if you said something during your interview that annoyed Alex, he's not going to ignore you. He's not allowed to. So it's, um, it's, it's really, you know, it's very gender neutral. If, if you're a man, if you're a woman, there was a computer that played, and it got a fair shake. Um, it, it, it's, really, um, it's really a very gender neutral experience. It's great. And, but by contrast, a lot of the things that I heard after I was on the show or when my shows were airing were really focused on gender. I saw somebody write, I wrote on an internet message board that I don't, quote, fit into the conception of a perfect female Jeopardy player, um, that the way I look and act wasn't, wasn't what people expected. I mean, maybe it meant I was supposed to be prettier. Maybe it meant I was supposed to behave differently. I mean, whatever it was, Jeopardy never demanded perfection from me or anybody else. All I was expected to do was follow the rules and play to win. That was what they, that's what they expected everybody. Even though, and so it was really you know, kind, of, kind of jarring to hear these, hear these things from the outside world that were so different from, from this bubble of being on the show. Um, and so, you know, I, I didn't really fully appreciate it until, until I heard all this other stuff and thought, what is this world we live in? Um, but, you know, and I, I thought, how unusual that Jeopardy really met that expectation that I have that I'll be judged on my own merits and that I didn't, didn't have to worry that my gender was some sort of a factor in whether I won or lost. Um, and, you know, I, I do expect that I'll be judged on my own merits. I, I have, I, you know, I don't never felt like my gender defined my capabilities. I, 
have a really strong sense of my own intelligence and abilities and uh, kind of a, a blind self-confidence about that. You know, it's, it's something that made me think, oh, I should get a master's degree in engineering. Um, even though I had been an art history major in undergrad, I mean, I thought, well, it'll be a challenge, but I'll be up to it. And that was how I felt about going on Jeopardy. And I felt like I was in as good a position as anybody to do well. And the show certainly never made me think otherwise. And <clears throat> I think that that is something that is really important, especially as I, as I played more games and kind of rose through the ranks of players that you know, I eventually ended up second on the list and I never thought, oh, you know, I'm in this boys club now. I thought, how is it possible that I'm the only woman that's ever done this? I thought, where are the others? And, um, and I think that that's something that is really important, a really important part of how I think about myself and, and my accomplishment on this show. That to me, seeing women succeed is normal. Seeing them achieve is normal. Seeing them being applauded for being smart is normal. And, that's what I think is important about my part in the conversation uh, about my time on Jeopardy and my gender and, and being on Jeopardy. That the way we talk about achievement and accomplishment and gender really matters. That it shouldn't be um, how, did this, how did this woman manage to do so well on the show, but how can we change the conversation so that gender isn't a context for accomplishment? That I didn't. Um, that, that I'm not just the winningest woman, that I'm not just in this other category, that I'm, I'm on the playing field. I'm up there with everybody. It was a level playing field, and I, I succeeded on that level playing field. Um, <clears throat> so I think, you know, as a feminist, I really believe that we should celebrate the accomplishments and achievements of women and pull them along with us. And part of how you do that is, is creating this idea that achievement and accomplishment by women isn't an aberration, which was how I often felt that I was treated, but that it's normal, that it should be normal, that it should just be what we expect. And, and many women expect, you know, many women have that mindset and many men have that mindset, but it's, it's, still not, it's still not as much of a norm as I feel like it should be. And so, you know, winning on a game show isn't a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but I hope that I've been able to lend my voice to the idea that me, me doing something great on this game show, or you know, winning, doing really well in it, is is providing one more voice in the course that it's normal for women to do well, normal for women to achieve, and I hope that one day people will see me more the way I see myself, that I didn't achieve this as a woman. I'm a woman who achieves. Thank you. Excellent.